Hey guys, in this video we're going to uh, get into layouts and views. Um, as you can see, if we go to our front end now, we have the default um, template or layout that CakePHP comes with, which is basically kind of like a debug template. Uh, you can see the queries we make down here, things like that. Um, so where to find this, this layout, is in your app folder. Uh, we want to go to view and um, layouts all right so if you remember we created the jobs folder here the jobs view well actually it's a folder that will hold many views um, we have our index which we did in the last video but if we go to layouts and uh, default this is actually where that layout is coming from this is where the head goes the HTML head um, this is where you can include scripts and CSS, things like that. Uh, you can see we have a header, um, a content area, and um, a footer area where we can use variables like cake version, which will give us the, the latest version of cake. Uh, and then here we have our SQL dump for debugging. Um, but basically we want to change this entire thing um, basically we just want to integrate our HTML template that we made a few videos back so I would suggest that we we keep this this default uh, but just rename it okay so I'm just gonna rename it default underscore BAK all right just so we have it in case we need it and then we'll create a new file called default dot CTP and this will basically be the one that we use. Uh, if we go back here and reload, we get nothing because we have nothing in our layout. So what I want to do now is go back to our HTML template that we created. Okay, so it was JF underscore HTML. And I'm going to open up the index HTML page. And then I just want to kind of, um, I want to take everything that's here, but the head area, the HTML head area is going to be quite different. So for now, I'm just going to I'm going to copy it all and paste it and then clear out the head and we can go through that step by step. All right, so we'll go ahead and remove all this. Now we should if we save this, we should see this all the static content. All right, so we can see we have all that the static text, um, no CSS because we cleared out the head because um, there's some special uh, va variables that we need to use. So in the head area, I'm actually going to open the, the original um, layout as well so we can see. Um, now we can use most of this, all right, so I'm going to grab this here, copy it. And we can actually close out this index HTML file and paste that in here. And basically, this is just giving us our character set. All right, just a, uh, a special way that we can um, use the HTML helper to do that. Here is our title. Now, I don't want the cake description, so I'm going to get rid of that. All right, and now we have this variable called title for layout. And this is going to allow us to set our title from within the controller. All right, so we can have dynamic pane, um, pane page titles. All right, so if we go back into the original template, um, let's just get this block here. All right, so first we have, uh, we're using the HTML helper to get the favicon if we're using one. Um, this is a, a call to the cake.generic CSS file. So this is how you can include CSS files using the HTML helper. So I'm actually going to um, change this. We don't need this cake generic. All right, so let's get that out of there. And I want to load uh, two style sheets that we have for our template. Um, well, we're going to actually load a lot of style sheets for our, our Kickstart framework but these are all included in the kickstart.css. So we really only need to include kickstart and um, our style, which is in the root, all right? So in 
here we just want to put the name of the file so it's going to be kickstart all right and I'm going to copy this and we also want a style now we're also going to want uh, to include some JavaScript all right so that we can also use this HTML helper okay except instead of CSS it's going to be script all right and we want to include jQuery and also the kickstart script All right, so the values I'm putting in here are the names of the, the files just without the extension. So this would include jQuery.js, kickstart.js, style.css, and kickstart.css. And now you're probably wondering where we put these files. All right, so let's save this. And then down here, um, this is basically including the files we need. This fetch command right here is going to actually insert it into the head area. All right, so you want to insert the meta tags, CSS, and scripts. All right, so now I want to, this is our HTML template. I also want to open up our application. All right, and the uh, basically our public file that's going to hold CSS, JavaScript, and the, all that is in the app web root folder okay so if you go to web root we have our CSS JavaScripts our images uh, things like that so this is the only folder that's really accessible from the web okay from a browser so let's go ahead and insert our files in CSS we want to actually let's just take everything that's in this folder from our HTML template and just paste it in there all right, and then if we go to, uh, actually, we also want to include this style sheet. Um, Kickstart puts the custom style sheet in the root directory as opposed to the CSS directory. Not sure why, um, but we're just going to grab that and put that with the rest of our CSS files. All right, and then JavaScript, we want to move our Kickstart over. And I also want to um, grab jQuery. Okay, so I'm going to just download jQuery. I'll take the compressed version. Okay, so I'm going to bring that over. And I'm just going to rename that. To jQuery all right and let's see do we have anything else we don't have any images so that should be good all right so let's go to our front end and you can now see that it's including our CSS um, and it should be including our JavaScript as well now of course this is all uh, static content from our layout so we need to um, make that dynamic all right so let's go to back to our default file our head area should be all set for now um, so now we can move down to the body all right so the first thing we have our logo here or our heading and it's pointing to index.html and we need to change that all right so obviously we're going to want the title to go to the home page now, just like with Code Igniter, we can use a special um, variable for our base URL. All right, so uh, in Code Igniter, we would echo, actually, it would be the function base URL, and that would give the root domain. Um, with Cake, it's going to be this web root. All right, so that's going to always give us our base URL. So you want to use this um, when you're including images or whatever. All right, so let's save that and make sure that that works. So if we click on the title, it brings us to the home page. 
All right, next we have this add job button, which is part of a form. So we want to add an action. And we can use our um, web root. So we'll say this web root, um, let's see, web root and jobs. We want to go to the jobs controller and then the add method. All right. And when you include web root here, it also uh, takes care of the, the slash. So you don't need to put a slash here after web root. All right, next we have our menu. All right, so there's a few things we want to do here. We want to make it dynamic so that when we click on, let's say, browse jobs, we want we want it to be highlighted blue. Uh, and that comes from having the class of current. All right, so we want to put a couple um, conditions in here to check the web route. All right, if we look at the web route and it says, login or something like that actually it, it would be something like users login or authenticate login actually I think it will be um, and then it'll highlight that menu item alright so first let's take care of where these links actually go alright uh, home is obviously gonna go to the home page so we want to say PHP whoops I want to say PHP echo this web root and then it's just gonna um, actually that's all we need for the home page all right um, so let's copy this actually wait a minute we get rid of that a href equals that all right so that looks good I'm just gonna copy this here the web root and browse jobs Let's take care of that link. Paste that in. So this will go to the jobs controller and then it's going to go to the browse method. Okay, register. Get rid of this. Um, this is going to go, let's see, paste that. It's going to go to users. So the users controller and then register all right and then this uh, login is going to go to web root users login okay so if we save that these obviously um, they're not going to do anything except you can see the URL up here change because all this is static content down here all right so the URLs look good Okay, next we want to add in our conditions for the current. Okay, so let me just get rid of that. And I'm just going to uh, paste this in. All right, so what we're doing here is we're going to echo. Uh, this is actually a shorthand if statement. All right, so this here is a cake PHP, um, I guess, variable that will give us the current URL or the current um, not the whole URL but the page the controller slash uh, method or whatever so we're saying if it's job finds which is the just the um, the root directory or if it's job finds slash jobs then we're gonna have class current okay we're gonna echo class current which is going to make the navigation highlighted. All right, and I think we actually have one too many greater than signs here. All right, so for the next one, let me paste this in. Okay, so now we're saying if it's job find slash jobs slash browse, then we're going to echo class is current because this is going this is the browse jobs link. Right. Next we have register. Okay, so if it's jobs, job find slash user slash register, and we have our login. Okay, so job find slash user slash login, and we'll save that. Go back. Okay, so now if we go to browse jobs, it highlights. 
register login. All right. Okay, so the next thing we want, um, this search area right here is not going to be in our layout it's going to be it's what's called an element all right so you can add elements to pages things like sidebars um, maybe footer areas or, or whatever anywhere that's not the main area uh, you could use elements for so what I'm going to do is grab the whole search area which is this div Now to the div right after the form. So I'm going to grab all that, cut that out, and then go to inside of the view folder, go to elements, and I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call this um, search.ctp. Okay, we'll paste that in, save it, and right now if we save the default, layout and reload you can see that the search is gone so what we need to do is just include that element into our template and that's very easy to do okay so we just want to say echo this fetch and then whatever the name of the element so now if we save it um, hmm. I actually think I used the wrong syntax we don't want fetch here we want element There we go. All right, so now you can see that it's loading the search element. All right, so next we have the main content. Right now, obviously, this is just static. What we want to do here is um, I'm actually going to take everything in between the this column div. Okay, so we want the UL. Yeah, we'll go up to the to the ending UL. Okay, and copy that and then I'm going to go to our view, our jobs index view and I'm going to leave that for now just so we, we know the syntax we need to get these posts from the database. Alright, but I just want to save this layout because we're going to actually just swap out the static content for um, the dynamic content so save that and then back in the default layout we just want to get rid of that and then to display the main content we want to say PHP echo this fetch want to say this fetch content save that um, unexpected less than line 48. Oh, we didn't close the PHP block. All right, so now you can see that it's loading the jobs index view. It has our dynamic titles and the static content, which we're going to swap out. Now, in addition to the content call right here, um, we want to include our, our an area for messages, for error messages, success messages, whatever. All right, so we can do that with echo, say echo this session. Okay, so we're going to use this session helper flash. All right, very similar to code igniter. And save that, and that should be good and I'm gonna stop here and then in the next video we'll swap out this for our dynamic content and we'll also add the browse view and do some other things as well